When I was young, I delivered newspapers. I delivered the, the, the Minneapolis Tribune, uh, the, the Fargo Forum, and the Grit. Now, obviously, the Grit was in the middle of the week, but on Sundays, I would go and I would always end my route with this woman named Gladys Schmidt. Now, Gladys was this beautiful human being. She was about 80 years old and would sit on the porch with her cat, and I loved going there last because she might even have some cookies for you or, or some banana bread, but she was that person. And when she died... When she passed away, uh, I, had a, I had a date that night. I was in high school, and uh, Dad told me, he said, well, we got Gladys's wake tonight. And I said, well, you know, I, you know I'm, I'm, I may hit the funeral tomorrow, Dad, but not tonight. And he looked at me, he said, you're going to the wake. We treat our people with respect when they pass away. In fact, let me give you some examples. When uh, Colin Powell passed away uh, just recently, uh, let me give you some examples what some of our presidents said about this. Uh, George W. Bush, let me use that as an example. Uh, he said, Laura and I are deeply saddened by the death of Colin Powell. He was a great public servant, uh, you know, starting uh, with his time as a soldier during Vietnam. Many presidents relied on General Powell's counsel and experience. He was National Security Advisor under President Reagan, Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff under my father and President Clinton, and Secretary of State during my administration. He was such a favorite of presidents that he earned the Presidential Medal of Freedom. Twice. He was highly respected at home and abroad, and most important, Colin was a family man and a friend. Laura and I send Alma and their children our sincere condolences as they remember the life of a great man. Ladies and gentlemen, that's class. That's dignity. Uh, let's go on to what President Obama said. General Paul was an exemplary soldier and an exemplary patriot. He was at the center of some of the most consequential events of our lifetimes. And although he'd be the first to acknowledge that he didn't get every call right, his actions reflected what he believed was best for America and the people he served. Along the way, General Paul helped a generation of young people set their sights higher. He never denied the role that race played in his own life and in our society more broadly. But he also refused to accept that race would limit his dreams. And through his steady and principled leadership helped pave the way for many who would follow. Little different approach. Uh, a little different vision on what General Paul accomplished in his time in public service. But that's class. That's dignity. Let's go on to look at what Jimmy Carter said. Uh, a true patriot and public servant, we were honored to work beside him to strengthen communities in the United States, help resolve conflict in Haiti, and observe elections in Jamaica. His courage and integrity will be an inspiration for generations to come. Again, class and dignity. Jimmy Carter talking about another role that Colin Paul paid, played for the people, not just of America, but of this world. Let's go on. Uh, look at what Bill Clinton said. He said he lived the promise of America and spent a lifetime working to help our country, especially our young people, live up to its own ideals and noblest aspirations at home and around the world. Mentioning young people, the opportunity that they have, and what an example he was to them. Let's go to our current president and, and see what he said. He said, Colin embodied the highest ideals of both warrior and diplomat. He was committed to our nation's strength and security above all. Having fought in wars, he understood better than anyone that military might alone was not enough to maintain our peace and prosperity. From his front row seat of history, advising presidents and shaping our nation's policies, Colin led with his personal commitment to democratic values that make our country strong. Time and again, he put country before self, before party, before all else, in uniform and out. And it earned him the universal respect of the American people. Having repeatedly broken racial barriers, blazing a trail for others to follow in federal government service, Colin was committed throughout his life to investing in the next generation of leadership. Ladies and gentlemen, whatever you think of these men, that's class and that's dignity. And that's a recogni recognition 
of a life well spent, an acknowledgement that he has passed, but yet he deserves respect. And his family deserves to hear that respect. Now let's go on to what the 45th president of the United States said, Donald J. Trump. Um, Wonderful to see Colin Powell, who made big mistakes on Iraq and famously so-called weapons of mass destruction, be treated so beautifully by the fake news media. Hope that happens to me someday. He was a classic rhino, if even that, always being the first to attack other Republicans. He made plenty of mistakes, but anyway, may he rest in peace. I'd ask you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen who are watching Beck News and down the road, is that class? Is that dignity? I go back to my father, and I, I, I learned from what my father taught me. I would never had tre have treated Gladys that way. And it was my time to show her respect. My father taught me that. Who raised Donald Trump? Who were his parents? Who, who were the people that taught him to be a decent human being? Did they? Because clearly they didn't succeed. Who would do that? For those of you Trump supporters, and most of you watching this are Trump supporters, how do you defend that? How do you? How do you, how do you sit there and look at this and say, well, that's just who he is. That's the way he talks. But look at all the great things he did for America. For me, he told me that Mexico was going to pay for a wall. He told me we were going to get out of Afghanistan. He told me that China was going to give in on the tariffs. But that's an aside. What I'm talking about is a man that's passed away. Talk about vindictive. Talk about vicious. Talk about egotistical. And talk about no class and no dignity. I challenge all of you who love this man, who will sit there and put that hat on and stand underneath that Confederate flag and think that January 6th was nothing but a bunch of tourists, I would challenge you how you defend this, how you defend his actions here. Because I can tell you this, my dad wasn't political. In fact, I, to this day, don't know what party he was from. I got my politics from my mom. But I can tell you this, he wouldn't care that he's a Republican. Donald Trump would have been taken to the woodshed for what he said here. And I'm just curious whether or not you will.